And that is when the reveal happens that I genuinely did not expect. Welcome back to Film Home Studios. It is the 13th of March, therefore the official release of issue two of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers The Return. I popped into town this morning to my local Forbidden Planet as I did last time. Check out the link in the description if you haven't seen the last one. But uh, we got the comic. Now, last time I got uh, the two uh, variant covers, uh, bear with, from up here. And uh, I was only gonna get one. I saw the two, I got the two, it happened. I only really planned on getting one today anyway, uh, but they only had one. So either way, I would have been able to get both. Here is Mighty Morphin Power Rangers The Return, issue two officially. It's been about a month since the first one released. Um, I've been very eager for this release because I uh, really enjoyed the first comic book. For starters, I do really like the art. Um, I think, I don't think I prefer it to either of these. I think these are two really strong pieces. That being said, that doesn't mean this one's bad in the slightest. It's really nice and I'm very excited to read. So I'm gonna pop away, I'm gonna read this, I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna tell you what I think. Okay, so just finished reading this year too. Um, a lot of things I actually wanna go over. Spoilers ahead if you haven't read this issue yet, but I do recommend it. So we start off actually seeing the event of Tommy's death. Some of the first lines in the comic are the fact that uh, Zordon, Alpha and the Command Center are dead, gone, which was a bit of a shock to me. I kind of, I, I suppose I assumed subconsciously that they were gone considering the first issue they were like, oh, we have new power interviews. I didn't, I didn't quite click. And then obviously the first thing you get is, shit, they're dead. You then go through the story of what happened. Uh, they were on the moon fighting Lord Zed. A bunch of classic monsters come back. Pudgy Pig comes back, uh, King Sphinx. The Mighty Minotaur is in this. There's there's a bunch, there's a bunch. And basically Jason, Zack, uh, Billy and Trini are in their Zords fighting off the monsters, just buying time for Tommy and Kim to go into Lord Zed's uh, moon palace and use this detonator, which basically does what the Z-Wave did in Power Engine Space, which purifies all the energy around it. That gets broken. Rita Repulsa starts fighting uh, Tommy and Kim. Kimberly kills Rita. Their plan was never to kill Rita, just to purify her. She's now dead. They had to get off the moon. There were some issues. Now specifically, Tommy says that he's the one who has to stay with the detonator to make it go off and Kimberly can't be for a very specific reason. She says till death to us part, she shows a ring. They were clearly married at that point, which is nuts. But I think the reason she couldn't stay is because they knew she was pregnant at the time. With obviously the person that this series has been hyping up, Olivia Hart. So they teleport back to Earth. They see a big section of the moon explode and that is when they realize we've won. Except Kimberly's on the floor crying because Tommy didn't make it out. But that was all 22 years ago. We then flashed to current day where Kimberly's basically just telling the story to Selena, who we learned is the, I think, niece of Trini or Trini's cousin's daughter. So their first cousin once removed. I think that's what I worked out last video. And they start chatting for a bit and Kimberly takes uh, Selena's morpher and goes to put it away. And they see uh, Kimberly's morpher. And they're like, can I see the morpher? That's really cool. Gives them the morpher. All of a sudden, Selena's Asking some questions which are a bit weird, like did you like killing Lord Zed and Rita? Was it, was it good? Did you feel fulfilled after you did it? Like, did you ever think you'd do it? Is there anyone, anyone ever been as evil since? And she's kind of like, what are you chatting? What are you on about? And that is when the reveal happens that I genuinely did not expect that Selena is not Selena. She is some sort of villain. They don't explicitly say it in the comic book, but she has long gray hair. She has Rita's staff. Realistically, this is Lord Zed and Rita's daughter. I'm not claiming that, it could be wrong, <laughs> but I mean, look at that. that that's, that's Rita's daughter. And then a little fight breaks out and Kimberly tries to morph and she gets smacked away at the last minute by this Selena daughter of Rita figure, whoever she is. She tries to morph, she gets knocked away and she's on the floor. Assumably not dead, but very injured. Uh, this evil villain disappears and walks through the door all of a sudden. Mom, I'm home. Olivia Hart. There she is. We finally seen her in this comic. And then that's where the issue ends and it says, next issue, issue three, daughter. That's issue two of Mike Moffin The Return. I think I prefer this one to issue one. Um, I think issue one felt a bit longer. It felt like there was a bit more story. I love that we opened up in an action sequence and they were like, for Zordon on Alpha. And there was this entire thing. It was incredible. But I think the twist of Selena not being um, Trini's cousin was like, I didn't see that coming. And it's funny because I'm not a massive comic book reader. For people who didn't watch the last video, this is my first like Power Ranger comic that I'm like diving into from like as it releases. I was blown away. I literally, I maybe I should start doing like reaction parts of this video while I just film myself reading it because my, I, I was, my jaw dropped, it was, it was nuts. And I think that only happened not because I wouldn't have expected such a twist, but I think I was so like fixated on us learning about Selena and 
the idea of, okay, we saw Min become the Yellow Ranger in a certain way in Once and Always. I wonder how they're going to change this. Oh, they changed it, <laughs> but in a completely different way. As for my expectations for the next issue, obviously I imagine we're going to learn a lot more about Olivia Hart. Um, I, am, I, I imagine we'll see her uh, reach out to people like Billy and Zach to see what's happening. We got no more updates on Billy and Zach. We know that Billy's uh, trying to tap into the morphing grid in order to cure illnesses. Um, Zach is off being famous, and obviously we've got Jason, who was... He's like a, he's a rogue ranger, but... And I've just realised something. If we grab these comics again... In issue one, there was an unidentified figure that Jason was fighting. Yeah, surely. So this is who Jason was fighting in issue one. They took the Tyrannosaurus power coin. That's surely. Again, not jumping to conclusions. The daughter of Rita Repulsa. So yeah, from the next issue, um, obviously I want to see some more Olivia Hart. She's the character that's been hyped up throughout the entire build-up of this. And we've only just seen her. And I want to know a little bit more about who this villain is. And why she is the daughter of Rita Repulsa. Thank you for watching this video. Massive shout out to Amy Jo Johnson and uh, Matt Hoston. Not only just for this comic, but Amy Jo Johnson actually checked out the last video we did in this. Uh, so thank you very much for watching, if you're watching again. Hi, I hope you have an incredible day. Thanks for doing this comic. Let me know what you guys think of this comic down below. Give me your thoughts and opinions. This is all my opinion and this is all video is also not a substitute to not read this comic get it online get it in stores do whatever you gotta do but i really recommend i plan on doing some more videos on this comic book series too in the future and of course next month i will be uh reading and reviewing issue three thanks again for watching and i'll see you soon